Good morning. Today we are going to answer this question. Why Swanley deformity and Bourdonnier deformity is happening in rheumatoid arthritis? Do rheumatoid arthritis really affect DIP? That is distal interphalangeal joint. We all know that one liner that rheumatoid arthritis never affects. It never affects distal interphalangeal joint. But still, why then does Swanley deformity and Bourdonnier deformity is leaving something in the distal interphalangeal joint? To know that, we need to know what is Swanick deformity first and what is Bartonian deformity. Swanick deformity is a condition in which there is a hyperextension of the proximal endophalangeal joint and flexion in the distal endophalangeal joint. Bartonian deformity is a condition in which there is a flexion in the proximal endophalangeal joint and extension in the distal endophalangeal joint. Why it is all happening? We need to know this anatomy. This is an anatomy of an extensor mechanism. Look, the extensor mechanism is having something called as a central slip. It is also having something called as this lateral band. If you want to know why it is called lateral band, look into this picture. Look, this is why it is called the lateral band. The central slip is attached to the middle phalanx just crossing the proximal interphalangeal joint. And note, the central slip cannot bring any movement at the distal interphalangeal joint. But look into the lateral band. The lateral band is attached to the distal phalanx crossing the distal interphalangeal joint that it can bring about a movement in the distal interphalangeal joint. Now assume that the central slip is getting torn somewhere here. Okay, and the person is trying to extend. When the extensor mechanism is acting, since the central slip is torn, it cannot bring about any extension in the proximal interphalangeal joint, but the intact lateral slip can bring about a movement in a distal interphalangeal joint and creating an extension at the distal interphalangeal joint. But a failed central slip will create only flexion at the proximal interphalangeal joint. Yes. So this is what called as botanier deformity, botanier deformity. And what is then the other one that is the swanic deformity. Look, when the lateral band is torn somewhere here, okay, in the same extensor mechanism, the lateral band is torn, the intact central band which is attaching to the middle phalanx and crossing the proximal interphalangeal joint can bring about extension at the proximal interphalangeal joint leading to hyperextension at the proximal interphalangeal joint but uh, the failed lateral band leads to a flexion at the distal interphalangeal joint and this is what called as a swan neck deformity clear so botanier deformity is a Deformity happening due to central slip tear and swan neck deformity is a deformity happening due to lateral band tear. So now the puzzle is solved that distal interphalangeal deformities are basically not due to the joint involvement in rheumatoid arthritis. Rather, it is all because of the extensor tender tear, whether central tender is torn or the lateral is torn determines the deformity. If central is torn, it is portinaire. If lateral is torn, it is swan neck. And this is Dr. Kadir for you from Chennai. Catch you on my other videos. Thank you.